What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 10 video. Now, in this video, what I wanna talk about are some Pokemon that I believe are pretty underrated in the Series 10 metagame. They're not necessarily like game-breaking Pokemon, Pokemon that will, if you add them onto your team, it's like a sleeper pick, like it's gonna absolutely destroy everything in the field. It's not that. These are Pokemon that I believe have a place in the metagame that haven't gotten recognized yet, and I think if people start to put them onto certain teams, uh, a lot more people will see their potential, and you'll probably see some results, to be honest. Like, it's really fun using these Pokemon, and I think they deserve just a bit more recognition. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content, and answer my comment question of the day. In your opinion, what is the most underrated Pokemon in Series 10? Let me know, and let's try to shoot for 200 likes on this video. So let's get started with the list. So number one on my list is, and of course, like this isn't in any particular order. It's not going to be like, this is the most underrated Pokemon. I think they're all like equally underrated, but number one on my list is something that you'll be familiar with if you watched yesterday's showdown live, and that is Regidrago. Now Regidrago in previous formats got overlooked until the end. We saw a lot more Regidrago teams in series nine, um, towards the end of it, like towards the end of the format when people had been playing for a while when the metagame had developed. Some people recognized that there is a spot for Reggie Drago. However, its main issue was the existence of Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini is a perfect counter to Reggie Drago because um, I want to say Fairy Terrain, but it's called Misty Terrain. Misty Terrain actually cuts the damage of Dragon type moves if the Pokemon that's being targeted is grounded. So that's actually a really big issue. And on top of that, Tapu Fini was extremely common meaning that most teams always had a switch into Regidrago and fairy types in general were really, really common. Now you might be saying, but Marcos Moxie boosted guy on YouTube face, aren't the two best Pokemon in the format right now, Zacian and Xerneas, both fairy types? Yes, yes they are. Regidrago cannot handle those two Pokemon, but that's not to say that the access to Zacian and Xerneas doesn't somehow make Regidrago better. I think having a Zacian as a partner for Regidrago actually means that it just gets a slight increase in viability. And here's why. Many teams only have one fairy type. Some of them only have either a Zacian or a Xerneas. One or the other. Some of them will have a Tapu Fini, but it's a lot less common. Some of them might have a Mimikyu. Some of them might have a Tapu Lele or a Tapu Koko. Regardless, no fairy enjoys facing off versus Zacian. If you have a Zacian on your team, that Xerneas is going to be hanging out in the back for a while. It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to come out until that Zacian's gone. That allows you to open up a huge, huge hole in the team with Reggie Drago. This set is a Scarf Reggie Drago set. Obviously, Dragon's Maw is a really powerful ability that increases the uh, or it multiplies the attacking stat by 1.5 times if you're using a Dragon move with this thing. So effectively, you get Stab plus Dragon's Maw plus Dragon Energy, which is one of the most powerful moves in the game. Dragon Energy is 150 base power if Regidrago is at full HP. And if you go first, since you're running a Choice Scarf on this set, uh, you'll be able to hit both opponents with a super powerful move. So yeah, if you actually have something like um, Zacian, Gothitel, Regidrago, I think that's probably one of the most ideal setups for it. Because what you can do is Zacian scares out fairy types from wanting to lead off. Um, and having Gothitelle on the team means that if you lead off Gothitelle, Regidrago, and the Gothitelle has Fake Out, not only are you pressuring the opposing Fake Out Pokemon, which is usually an Incineroar, which you can outspeed and Fake Out, but it also traps them in. So if they lead off poorly versus Regidrago, you can pretty much get a 2-0 lead immediately. You can get two KOs very, very quickly. And if you still have that Zacian in the back, you can deal with opposing Fairy types uh, before the Regidrago comes in. I've had a lot of games where I lead off Zacian and Gothitelle, KO the Fairy type immediately because they have no defensive play for that, and then just get Regidrago in in the end game to sweep with Dragon Energy. This is such a powerful Pokemon that I think a lot of people are going to recognize as powerful going forward in the metagame, but as of right now, it's severely underrated. So the set that I'm running is the same one in yesterday's video. It's 4 HP, 84 defense, 220 special attack, 12 special defense, 188 speed with a modest nature, choice scarf, dragon energy, ancient power, Draco Meteor, hyper beam. What this set does is dragon energy obviously is just the move you're gonna be clicking 90% of the time, but Draco Meteor is gonna be a move that you'll click once your dragon energy decreases in power. Ancient Power is a coverage move that helps you deal with Volcarona, while Volcarona actually takes more damage from a uh, single target Draco Meteor. You're actually gonna want to click Ancient Power most of the time because while 
Draco Meteor does have a chance to one shot. Uh, it will also lower your special attack stat by two stages, meaning that you're, you're probably going to have to switch out the Reggie Drago anyway, so Ancient Power is just a bit safer. And Hyper Beam is literally just there if you find yourself in a situation where it's just a Reggie Drago and a Fairy type, and it's at low health, so Hyper Beam will pick it off anyways. You almost never want to click that, but it's there because he really doesn't have any other move that's as good as Hyper Beam. So yeah. Defensively, this guy will be able to take one plus one Behemoth Blade from Jolly Max Taxation and one Dazzling Gleam from uh, Timid Max Special Attack Xerneas, given there's another Pokemon on the field to help distribute that damage a bit and lower it. So yeah, uh, that's really all it's meant to take defensively. Obviously, it can very easily eat a Water Spot from Kyogre and then you can hit it back with a Draco Meteor. Uh, but speed-wise, what it does is it outspeeds base 111s naturally and a couple more Pokemon because like, I actually speed crept later on after I had tested a bit. What it's mainly meant to do is if you pair it up with a Regieleki, if you win a speed tie Electroweb War with that Regieleki and you have Regidrago and Regieleki on the field, you'll now be able to outspeed that Regieleki and hit it with a Dragon Energy one-shotting it. And if you're actually facing off versus something like Indeedee plus Calyrex, what you can then do is actually just go ahead and go for the Electroweb on those two and then hit them with the Dragon Energy and you'll also be outspeeding that combo, meaning that they're likely not going to enjoy that hit and Regidrago with its high HP will be able to eat both attacks pretty easily. So yeah, Regidrago, severely underrated and I think a lot of people should be using it on their teams. Next up is a Pokemon that a lot of people have been using a bit more, but I still don't think it's at the usage it deserves. This one is Aegislash. Now, Aegislash really got messed up with the whole Dynamax thing happening in Gen 8. Uh, basically, Aegislash didn't enjoy the transition to Dynamax because its ability Stance Change, which swaps its attacking and defensives, uh, its offensive and defensive stats, depending on if it's using like um, a protecting move or an offensive move, it'll flip like the 140 stats over to the 50 stats and vice versa. It does that, right? So. It really only works with like King Shield, and King Shield turns into Max Guard. If you Max Guard your Aegislash, it actually doesn't swap the form. Aegislash is stuck in the Blade form, meaning that on the next turn, if you were to Dynamax your Aegislash, and you were still in Blade form, you were likely getting outsped in one shot, thus making it a really low value Dynamax mod, something that you didn't even want to run, because there were other Ghost types that were fine that you could use on your team. There were other Steel types that were better. But I think now that Dynamax is gone, it actually has a lot of value in the format. This is because of its high damage output once in blade form, its ability to tank hits when in shield form, it's low speed, meaning that you can get the second hit off and eat the hit and then, you know, hit it back. But also it's access to wide guard. Now wide guard doesn't change you uh, into shield form, but it's still a really good move. So what this set's meant to do is it's able to support the team um, and defend them from spread moves like Astro Barrage, like Expanding Force, like Water Spout, like Dazzling Gleam, like Electroweb. All of that can be blocked by Wide Guard, and if you play Aegislash well, it's actually a really powerful Pokemon offensively as well. While most sets will be running a specially offensive set to bypass Intimidate, I actually, obviously what you're seeing on the screen isn't standard Aegislash, but it's, it's a little bit of Moxie boosted sauce, a little bit of guaranteed spiciness. Um, it's a set that I've been using that's been working out really well for me. So what we have is an expert belt set. King Shield, Wide Guard, Iron Head, Shadow Sneak, 252 HP, 164 attack with an adamant nature, 4 defense, 52 special defense, and 36 speed. Now Aegislash has the same speed stat as an Incineroar. What I actually put on this graphic is that you can swap out Wide Guard for close combat if you so feel like it. And what that will allow you to do is if you're unintimidated, you can actually one shot the Incineroar that is typically defending a Xerneas. And if you're unintimidated, if there isn't an Incineroar defending the Xerneas and you have some way of bypassing the support Pokemon that might be next to the Xerneas, what you'll be able to do is absolutely annihilate Xerneas with Expert Belt Iron Head. Expert Belt Iron Head is a guaranteed one shot on 4 HP Xerneas. And while they can run a little bit more uh, bulk on that to live certain hits, if it's not a substantial amount of bulk, if they aren't running like some defense EVs, some a decent amount of HP, they're still they still have a chance to get one shot by Iron Head. And if they don't get one shot by Iron Head, the Shadow Sneak following that will be enough to KO. So yeah, uh, the 36 speed obviously outspeeds the Incineroar, but um, that's really only going to come in handy for trying to hit the Xerneas before the Incineroar can hit you, or if you have close combat. Uh, close combat's also really nice for dealing with opposing Ferrothorn, and it's able to one-shot stack attack, obviously. Uh, but the main value from the set 
is going to come from the King Shield wide guard shenanigans, Ironhead being able to deal with Xerneas, and Shadow Sneak just being a decent move overall. Uh, defensively, if you're actually in shield form, you'll be able to tank a water spout from uh, from modest max special attack Kyogre and then hit it back with uh, whatever move you decide to. I would personally run a close combat set if you want to deal with Kyogre, but all, obviously the wide guard set is just as good at stopping Kyogre in its tracks. So yeah, I think that this set is actually really nice. If you want to try it out, let me know how you <laughs> or what you think about it. Uh, I really appreciate that. But I think uh, Age of Slash probably fits well on Xerneas teams, if anything. Having its own Xerneas by its side means that um, Age of Slash is really nice for blocking an Electroweb from opposing Regieleki uh, and being able to stop that Xerneas from being outsped on the next turn by the Regieleki after you Geomancy. So that's really nice. Um, yeah, I just think Age of Slash is an overall really valuable Pokemon that now that Dynamax is gone, is going to see a big spike in usage. Granted, people recognize it. Next up is Zapdos. Now this is regular Zapdos, not Galarian Zapdos. Galarian Zapdos has seen a heavy spike in usage, but I think regular Zapdos also has a place in this format. And that's just gonna be as a very basic, specially offensive Pokemon. Thunderous does do certain things better than Zapdos, like Eerie Impulse, Thunder Wave stuff. However, I think that Zapdos from a purely offensive standpoint, on rain teams in particular, is a very underrated Pokemon. If you're running a Torn Ogre team, you could run, uh, you know, an alternate electric type. You could run your own Regieleki, but I think that having Zapdos actually allows you to play a little bit better versus Zacian teams. Now, Zapdos naturally resists both moves that Zacian would want to go for, being Behemoth Blade and uh, Sacred Sword. And if you're running a Citrus Berry set rather than the Life Orb set I have on screen, it will be a guaranteed three hit KO from Behemoth Blade. So what you can actually do is take advantage of the rain with a Life Orb set and run some of Zapdos's various coverage and stab moves. Thunderbolt does a ton of damage off of max special attack Life Orb Zapdos. Hurricane is nothing to switch in on by anything. Not even Ferrothorn wants to take it despite being neutral. And speaking of Ferrothorn, if you're not in the rain, Hurric or not Hurricane, Heat Wave is able to deal a massive amount of damage to that thing, meaning that it's not gonna be able to be a nuisance to you and your team. I think Protect is pretty essential. I think if you're going to run it on a rain offense team, you should choose either between Heat Wave or Eerie Impulse if you want to run one or the other. And Eerie Impulse is a really, really useful uh, move in this game because it's able to stop special attackers in their tracks very quickly. Hypothetically, if you were facing off versus a Geomancy Xerneas and they wanted to go for the Geomancy on the turn that Zapdos is in the field, they might be thinking, most Zapdos aren't running Whirlwind. Uh, I'll be perfectly fine to do this. I can eat the hit afterwards. I'm good. What you can actually do is go for the Eerie Impulse onto the Xerneas, lowering its special attack step by two stages, meaning that the Geomancy did nothing but neutralize that Xerneas' special attack drop. And yes, it does get the speed boost and it does get the uh, special defense boost, but overall it won't be able to deal the damage that it really needs to deal if it wants to be able to get KOs. I think Zapdos also does pretty fine next to um, next to Zacian as a support Pokemon. I think Thunderous probably does better in that situation, but Zapdos is still a fine Pokemon for that situation since it's able to cover a couple of things for uh, Zacian, mainly being the Kyogre matchup. Kyogre obviously is able to take a Sacred Sword pretty well because of its high bulk and it's able to resist the Behemoth Blade. So having Zapdos on that team will allow you to deal massive damage with a Thunderbolt or Eerie Impulse it if you, des if you decide to play the long and slow game. So yeah, I think Zapdos is a really great Pokemon on rain teams overall and I think that we should probably be using it a bit more on certain builds. Next up is a Pokemon that you should be familiar with if you've been watching my channel this week and that's Araquanid. I've displayed this Araquanid set before, but I think it's one that is, it's really good. It's its really good. I don't know how else to say it. So Araquanid is solid in a Trick Room team uh, in this metagame. I personally ran it next to Necrozma Duskmane, but there are also other Trick Room Pokemon you could be running it next to, like Calyrex Ice, or I don't know if you want to run like Trick Room Lanala for some reason, but Araquanid has high damage output because of its ability Water Bubble, and comboing that with Mystic Water means that you can invest very little into your attack stat and be able to deal massive damage regardless. It also is one of the new Pokemon um, that are able to, well I guess it's not a new Pokemon, but it's newly able to viably run Wide Guard. Wide Guard will allow it to block opposing moves like Icy Wind, Electro Web, Water Spout, etc. for its team, and its high power liquidation is able to one-shot Pokemon like Incineroar and Volcarona, and defensively is where it really shines because it's able to deal with both Zacian and Xerneas. This set in particular will be able to take a timid max special attack Xerneas Moonblast, uh, and that's at plus two. Like that is, it's able to eat the hit 
and then hit it back with either a poison jab or a liquidation. I think liquidation technically does more, but poison jab is also an option. Uh, and on the physical defensive side, it's able to easily tank Behemoth Blade and Sacred Sword from Zacian. So yeah, I think Arachnid, like, I know that I didn't spend too much time on this, and that's just because I've talked a lot about Arachnid in the previous videos, but I think it's really, really underrated right now on Trick Room builds, and even just on regular builds. You can have it as, like, a Trick Room answer, since it's able to deal with other Trick Room Pokemon, so... Yeah, I think Arachnid is something that you should be using right now. You could also swap out Mystic Water for Safety Goggles if you don't feel like uh, getting spored by Amoongus under Trick Room, which could be useful, but I'm personally a big fan of the Mystic Water set. And alternatively, if you didn't want to run Wide Guard, you could run like an Assault Vest set to make it so you take special moves even better and then just go even more heavily into the offensive set by running like a, a Brave Nature with Max Attack. So yeah. Next up, we have Ludicolo, and Ludicolo is going to be the last Pokemon on this list. Ludicolo is something that didn't really enjoy having Kingdra as an option on certain teams. So Kingdra outclassed Ludicolo within a Dynamax format, mainly because it's able to outspeed Ludicolo and able to one-shot it with Hurricane. Well, Ludicolo, I think, is probably more optimal on rain teams in this format because of its newly found access to viable Grass Knot. And it's now viable because Dynamax is gone. Grass Knot is able to hit Pokemon like Groudon and Kyogre and other very heavy uh, legendary Pokemon uh, and deal 120 base power uh, special grass type damage. And that's nothing to laugh at. If you're a Kyogre or you're a Groudon, you are threatened heavily by opposing Ludicolo. And it's able to also support the team by spreading Scald Burns um, if you're running uh, if you're running this on a rain team, obviously, which you're going to be, uh, you'll be able to outspeed a lot of Pokemon. You should be able to outspeed Zacian and threaten it with a very powerful Scald. Not only does it have a chance to burn it, but it's also going to be dealing a ton of damage because of that uh, rain uh, boost in the power of your water type moves. And Landers has been seeing an increase in usage because of how powerful of an Intimidate Pokemon it is. Or if you're just, you know, running Landers Eye, it's still susceptible of being one shot by Ludicolo with an Ice Beam. And I think the value from Ludicolo comes from its bulk mixed with its speed and offensive stats. Obviously, 90 isn't the strongest offensive stat, but when you combo that with how many hits it's able to eat with an Assault Vest set, it is actually a pretty solid Pokemon. This thing can easily tank a couple of hits from uh, Thunderbolt Regieleki. Uh, it's able to resist Zacian's Sacred Sword, not Sacred Sword, but uh, it's Behemoth Blade. Personally, I'd consider the Behemoth Blade a pretty Sacred Sword, but that's besides the point. But yeah, uh, you can also alternatively run Muddy Water instead of Scald if you don't feel like spreading burns and would rather just go for like Accuracy Drop Cheese, but... Obviously, Ludicolo is a really powerful Pokemon, uh, and a Life Orb set would be fine over an Assault Vest set, but I think Assault Vest is a little bit better because it allows you to better deal with um, Pokemon like Hurricane Zapdos or um, other specially offensive uh, flying types in this metagame. So yeah, I think Ludicolo is great. I think all the Pokemon on this list are great. Let me know what Pokemon you personally think are underrated in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.